going on here too? Oh, YouTube. Wow, really? I must have had a flashback. What's going on Facebook? How is everybody doing? Y'all doing all right? Y'all enjoying Jesus? Come on in the room. I've got a whole bunch, whole bunch, whole bunch to talk about with you guys today. What's going on, you guys? Come on in. Come on in, children. Yes, we have a lot to talk about. As you can see from the topic of my live video, things have been interesting on the book of faces. Yes, and I'm on my way uh, home from the JLB. So you know how we do. You know we got to talk about it. I've been wanting to talk about it. But you know, I've been, uh, been keeping my eye on the weather here. As you can see, it is raining. We are experiencing that tropical storm type of weather ourselves. And we are also praying and watching and looking to make sure um, we are safe. Um, schools have been released early today. Uh, I'm going home from my J-O-B. Um, and so, yeah, things are getting real here in Louisiana. Like we need some more hurricanes and like we need, need more flooding. We don't need any of that. We, could, we need more rain and more hurricanes. Like we need a hole in our um, foot. But anyway, um, so this is what we are preparing ourselves for. And uh, as we are preparing, there's a whole lot of emotions going on. People are upset, they're mad, they're angry. And so what do we do when we are mad, we are upset and we're angry? We blame God, we blame his people, we blame his church, and we blame everybody. And so there's a lot of blame. A lot of fingers being pointed, a whole lot of blame uh, being uh, thrown around, but I wanted to talk about it. Definitely going to be safe. You all be safe as well. And make sure you check on your family members. Make sure you have an exit plan. Trust and believe my mother has had her bags packed since last week. She has her exit plan together, honey. She, she don't play. Huh? Sister Woods don't play. Uh, the, the good deacon has stocked the house. The deacon don't play. Uh, deacon has gone to the Sam's Club, honey, and probably cleaned out all the shelves. So we're okay for right now. I pray that you and your family are well. Those of you all who are watching, I know you're from all over the country, but you may have family in Texas. You may be in Texas or a family in Louisiana or any area that may be uh, impacted by this weather that we have been having. But y'all come on in the room and share this broadcast because I want I want to talk. Yes, I want to use this wonderful forum uh, whereby which we can collect opinions, ideas, and solutions and see if we can't um, get some understanding. Uh, because the Bible says, what? In all our getting, get understanding. And there are a whole lot of people that are commenting and talking and sharing the blame but they don't have an understanding for those of you guys who are watching from texas know that we're praying for you um i'm almost in my driveway my commute is not that uh it's not that uh not that intense today because things are being let out early and because the rain has started and the winds have certainly started and so we're kind of bracing ourselves and watching out to see what harvey wants to do to louisiana but let me let me let me bring this all into perspective because I um, am from Louisiana, born and raised, and I went through Katrina in um, 2005 um, and lost my first home in Katrina um, and uh, had to rebuild and everything. And now 12 years later to the date, 12 years later to the date, we are faced again with another storm. So it's, it's definitely troubling. For those of us who've been here before, we, we've definitely been here. We've seen this before. Uh, definitely causes uh, definitely causes us to uh, pray. Um, but this is what I want to say. It is so easy to target the biggest thing, uh, the biggest target. And what people have been saying about Lakewood Church and Pastor Alstein has been absolutely 
ridiculous. I did a quick search because I wanted to see um, just a, how just how many uh, mega churches there was. There was a complete listing of churches that housed over five thousand people. Um, many, many, many churches were listed in that list. I just I was just curious. Um, but there were other uh, arenas that were relatively dry that were also closed. And um, I want I want us to understand that when you have a church the size of Lakewood, first of all, put yourself in mind of a dome or a um, convention center versus a church. So for the average person, your church is... Um, your, the opening of your church involves somebody like my daddy, Deacon Woods, going down to the church with his keys, turning the little thing on the door, and now the church is open. He'll go back there and turn on the air. He'll go back there and uh, t hit a couple of light switches, and the church is open. Even for me, uh, I, I'm a pastor. For me to open up the, the door to the church, I take out my keys, I open the first lock. I go upstairs, I open the second lock, I flip the light switch on, I make sure the air is on. That's how I open the church. So it's kind of easy for, for somebody like me or somebody like you, if you attend a church like that, to say, why wasn't the church open? However, when you are the pastor of a church that is the, the, the size of, well, that is larger than a mall, a, a church that is larger than the entire city that I live in, um, a church that is a larger um, than your average convention center, uh, think opening the Superdome. Think opening a convention center. Think opening a massive arena. Um, think volunteers. Think who's gonna, who's who's gonna take care of all these people. Um, who's going to uh, make sure people are fed? Who's gonna make who where? Who's who's gonna take care of all this stuff? And so yeah. Um, people are quiet now because, let me say this, Lakewood Church is open. It's open. Go on ABC right now. There's live footage of buses and loads and loads of school buses and all kinds of transportation vehicles that are unloading right now at Lakewood Church. Well, why the delay? The delay is because you can't just send good old Deacon Jones down to the church to unlock the church when your church is the size of a mall, <laughs> right? Also, how they was gonna, how, how how will they get to the church if the interstates are closed and if there's flooding and if people don't have transportation to get to the church? That's interesting. That's interesting. Um, I, I hear people saying things like, uh, "Well, that's see, that's why I don't, that's why I don't go." So this is the thing: you don't go to church. You don't want to give to the church, but the church should take the money from the people who go to the church and the people who give to the church. And the church should allow everybody in so everybody can be there. You, you don't want to go and you don't want to um, be told where to give your money to, but you want to demand that the church doors are open. But you're not demanding that the mall is open. The Galleria, it's not open to the public. There's already food and clothing in the Galleria. Good food with kitchens and ovens and stoves in the food court. There's stores with new clothes, brand new clothes, never been worn in everybody's size. Right there in the Galleria, many, many, many floors and offices and executive suites and things. There's department stores with beds and bedding and sheets and things. But nobody's demanding for those malls to be open for the public. Yeah, they're not demanding that Red Cross go there and put cots in 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 the aisles of the of of those stores and they're not blankets or whatever. They're not demanding anything, but they want Lakewood Church to um be open. Yeah. Um people spend like thousands and thousands of dollars in the clubs yeah for their entertainment purposes um are those club doors open are they open i just want to know hmm? yeah i just i want to know yeah that's that's all um so anyway and i was having some great discussion i want to thank i see a woman of god is in the room uh pastor chantel McNabb. 
awesome dialogue was taking place on her page. So, do y'all want to know what I was told? I was told this. I've been catching it from all sides. Number one, I work for the city, so I'm always getting calls about what's the city gonna do. Well, I'm not here to speak for the city. Um, yeah, I'm here to speak for Stacy. Then I was, I was, I was. Um, yeah, people were saying things like, "See, this is why people don't go to church because y'all take people's money and y'all close the doors." Well, yeah, my church doors were open. Yeah, through the flooding and stuff, we were open. Uh, for a month afterwards, and we were like doing everything we could do, um, but like most of the people that we helped and we assisted, um, you know, they were blessed, and they told us thank you, and we did it because of the love of God, no other reason. But a lot of the people that are talking, I don't think they donated one dollar, not one, not one bottle of water, not one. But anyway, we're moving on from there. We're moving on. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Um we we turn that's that's what we do though. When then when there's a disaster, we turn on God, we turn on the church, and we turn on his people. And we get really violent. And then 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 we're like, Well let us in the church. Oh, you wanna you wanna come to church? <laughs> you wanna come to church now? You wanna come to church? All the prayer meetings we've had, all of the revivals, Bible studies, outreaches. You want, but you didn't want to come. You didn't. You don't want to go to Joe Osteen's church because he don't preach the truth. You don't want to go to Osteen's church because he smiles too much. You don't want to go to Joe Osteen's church because it's too big. You don't want to go to Joe Osteen's church because he has too many people. You don't want to go to Joe Osteen's church because they have too much money. But now, oh somebody, can anybody give me an A flag? Because I feel like tuning up. Now you want to beat down the doors of the church. Oh, you want to go now. Let me tell y'all something. God will get you in the church, honey. One way or the other, he'll get you in the door. Huh? Baby, if I was Joel Osteen, I would have an extra large bottle of extra virgin olive oil. I would be, anoint <laughs> I would be anointing everybody with crosses once they cross the seal of the church and, and, and said, oh, you're here. Welcome. We've been waiting on you. That's what I would do. That's what I would do. That's what I would do. But see, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. So the church. Let me. Let me. Let me get this straight. Let me get this straight. Let me see if I got it. You're not supposed to give any money to the church. Not one copper cent. You don't want to give one dollar to the church because they already always already have too much money. Got it. Check. Then you don't want to go ever to church. Check. Got it. Then, um, yeah, you don't want to support. Uh, anything at the church. Okay, cool. Got it. Check. But now that the storm has come, the disaster has come, now everybody wants to go. I've got a song for you. Like to hear it. Here it go. There's a storm out on the ocean and it's moving this way. But if your soul not anchored in Jesus, you will surely drift away. Mm. Yeah. All right. Well, praise the Lord. But anyway, I just wanted to, um, yeah. Hey. Hey, everybody. So y'all let me know. Chime in. Chime in and tell me where we are. Because, see, today, uh, oh, let me give the other side. Let me give the other side. The other side of the coin that was flipped was like, uh, well, well. remember what those people did to the Superdome in Hurricane Katrina? Remember how those people caused massive destruction? Yeah, y'all, this would be a good time to share the video. Remember how those people, I said, wait a minute. I lived in a hotel after Katrina. After Katrina came and turned life as I knew it upside down. I was one of those people. I, I And then they were like, take your mouth off of Pastor Joel Osteen. He's a man of God. Touch not God's anointed. When those people were uh, in Katrina, those people tore up the Superdome. Those people tore up the Morial Center. Those people tore up the hotels. I said, well, I'm a woman of God and I stayed in the hotels and I'm not those people. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus too. So my stuff deserved to get to and then the, then she said she said well the good have to suffer for the bad honey 
I said, okay, well, I thank God for being my shelter in the time of the storm. 12 years ago, exactly. Before Katrina, never had been on governmental assistance. Before Katrina, my neighborhood had never flooded. Before Katrina, my house had never had any damage, water damage or wind damage. Before Katrina, I didn't owe any man anything but to love him. After Katrina, even 12 years from now, got somebody trying to call me. Anyway, after Katrina, 12 years, still, still recovering. Still recovering. So I have my, my sister here, Leanne Taylor. She's in Houston, Texas. I see Tish, the woman of God, in Houston, Texas. I see a whole lot of people chiming in. Y'all let me know where we are here. So we're going to be compassionate. We're going to... um. We're going to love each other. We're going to give. Listen. Oh, you ready for this? We are the church. Last time I checked in the word of God, we are the body of Christ. We're the ecclesia. We are the called out. You and I, we make up the church, not the building. Yeah, the building is where the, the church gathers. But we, the people, we are the church. So what that looks like is if you're asking why wasn't the church open, then you should say, why didn't I open up? Huh? Why did not open up? Um, so yeah, why who have you opened up your home to? Who have you opened up your resources to? Who have you cooked a, a meal for? Have you started packing up your clothing yet? People are gonna need it. Have you started gathering bottles of water yet? They're gonna need it. Cases of water. Yeah, they're gonna need it. Um, and while we're doing that, while we're collecting, yeah, start collecting for your own neighborhood, because there are people hungry every day. Um yeah, so since we are the church, um, instead of having strength in your little fingertips, you know, we have a lot of strength in our fingertips. Oh, we're mean texting typing people right now, honey. Oh, yes. Yes, we are. We are, we are mean posting typing people. But why don't you form your own committee, church, body of Christ, and you open up your own bank account, honey. Open up your own, um, yeah, your own doors. And see what you can do to be a help to somebody, sweet pie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, Louisiana, we're so sympathetic to storms because we know what it is to go through a storm. We know what it is to go through a storm. We know what it is to brace through a storm. My coworkers are watching. Hey, y'all. <laughs> we know what that's like. So while everyone has criticism for Lakewood Church, by the way, Lakewood Church is open. They're open now. So you're going to have to find another reason to be mad. I'm sorry. You're going to have to get another reason to be mad. You're going to have to find another reason to be mad at God. You're going to have to find another reason to be mad at the church. You're going to have to find another reason for why you don't go to church. Okay? Because Lakewood Church is open now. They've rallied the troops. The buses are rolling in. Find another reason. Find another excuse. Okay? And... I've got news for you. Lakewood Church is not the only church that's open. Many, many, many doors are open. Make sure you go. And don't just lift your hands um, and, and, and tell the Lord thank you. Do that. But make sure you tell the people thank you too. All those volunteers, all those people that are leaving their jobs, and some of them are neglecting their families to go volunteer. Some of them have suffered loss and damage, but they're going to volunteer. The reason why I was able to uh, do what we did in the times of the flood was because I understood. I understood what it's like to go through a flood. I understood what it was like to go to a storm. And just in case, thank you, Brittany. Brittany's right there in Houston. Just in case anyone would like to volunteer, they're taking those too. Yeah. So if you want to, you know, but I don't know how you're going to fly in and it's flooded. Or how you're going to drive in and it's flooded. But, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, chime in. I want to know. I'm running my mouth. I want to know. What are your thoughts? What are your opinions? Y'all still mad or no? You still upset? Tell me. Tell me. Then also tell me what you're doing to be an assistance. Or to being a help. Tell me what you're doing. Because as a pastor, as a leader, we love to blame the church. What? What y'all doing over there at the church? Well, sweet pie, you go to the church. What are you doing? Hmm? What are you doing? Red beans are cheap. Rice is cheap. Go and cook your pot of beans, honey. And find out who you can take it to. You may be living in an area where there is no storm. 
but I'm sure there's some homeless people. It's homeless people all the time. Jesus said, the poor you will have need of always. So go find you somebody. Don't wait till the storm. Go find you somebody and help. Oh, and for the, let me tell y'all something. A lot of people saying, see, that's why I don't pay tithes now. Well, guess what? Did you collect your 10% out of all of your checks? Did you do that? And out of all of your checks, are you taking that 10% to help someone? No? Oh, so you don't want the church to tell you what to do with your money. Okay, so how about this? You don't want the church to tell you what to do with your money. You don't want the church to tell you what to do with your property. You don't want the church to tell you what to do with your stuff. But you want to bash the church for not spending their money to help you. Oh, you want to bash the church for not spending their money to open up their doors to you. I see how that works. That's fair. That's really fair. That really makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Glory to God. So anyway, God has a way. He has a way. And I certainly sympathize with everyone. Like I said, our eyes are on the news right now because Harvey's not done. Harvey's not done. 12 years today, 12 years to this date, I was, uh, yeah, I, I was watching Katrina wash away my house. 12 years ago today, I was watching Katrina tear up my city. And I was called a refugee in my own country. 12 years ago today, um, I was in the situation that most people in Texas are facing. So I get it. And then one year ago today, our church was open, helping people who had just been flooded out. And the news took forever to tell the country about it. So I understand. People in Louisiana, shall we understand these floods and these hurricanes, honey? So what we're going to do is what we've always done. We're going to continue to be the church. We're going to continue to pray. We're going to continue to give. We're going to continue to be the arms and the feet and the eyes of Jesus. We're going to continue to love everybody, even those who don't want to go to church until you need the church. We're going to continue to pray for one another, even though folk don't want to pray until they really need the Lord. And we're going to keep enjoying Jesus and all his joys. Okay? Those are my two cents. I'm not sure where your two cents are. But I'm open to it. Go ahead. Type to me. Tell me how you feel. If you want me to invite you in the room, come on in. Well, the church the church ought to be praying. The church has been praying. In fact, Tuesday is our regular prayer day. Normally, two people show up. Yeah. Yeah. But any comments? Anybody else? Anybody want to chime in? Anybody have anything to add to this dialogue or this discussion? Huh? Anybody? No? Y'all don't want to talk back to me today? <laughs> I'm listening. I'm listening. Your comment is above. Okay, cool. I'll go and check it out. Uh, Armani says, go read Matthew 8, 23-27 and tell the storm, peace be still. Yeah, I, I'm talking I'm talking to the storm. Yes, um, Pastor uh, Joe Osteen certainly did open his church today. I supported you guys last year. Now I'm here in Baton Rouge and can I go back to Houston? You sure did. I remember that. And I know that you uh, are literally facing a complete interruption, upsetting of life as you know it. And we're here for you as well. We're here for you as well. Let us know what we can do. Inbox me. Let us know. Absolutely. Amen. God bless you, Peggy. Peg, Pastor, God bless you. You know, and I just really want us to think before we share. You know, Lakewood Church is a huge target. So it's easy to kind of shoot at the biggest thing. You know? Huge target. But, uh, with that many people, you gotta you gotta wonder, you know, who was going who you know, who's gonna volunteer? People who've lost their houses, 
who's going to help? You know, who's going to man a facility of that size? Well, usually they're probably getting their families out. You know, cars are underwater, interstates are underwater. You know, it's, it's, it's just, my whole point is it's really easy to point the, the finger of blame to say what the church should do. Now, am I ignoring a very real reality in that um, a lot of times our focus is misplaced? No, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not ignoring that at all. Uh, I understand. But it bothers me when Christians jump on the bandwagon of saying the church ought to help. Well, yeah, we should help. But just make sure. Just make sure that you're prob you're part of the solution and not contributing to the problem. Yeah? I particularly, absolutely love the church. I thank God for the church. I thank God that the seeds that I sow into doing the work of the ministry always come back to me. I'm grateful that I'm a part of an organization and a body that can come together and get funds and resources together. When Red Cross and big organization, not to throw them under the bus, but let's face it, the needs are so great. There is no one entity, there is no one organization that can help everybody. So guess what? Everybody has to do their part. The moral of the story is do your part. Do your part. Do your part. If all you have is $5 to spare in, in giving, all you have is $5, do your part. If all you have, um, you know, the, the, the prophet went to the woman of God. He said, what's in your house? She said, all I have is, um, you know, this, this thing of oil and a little meal. And the prophet taught her how to use what was in her house. And it was enough to work a miracle in her life. So use what you have. He asked Moses, what's in your hand? He said, all I have is a rod. But that rod in his hand with faith in God was able to part the sea and they were able to cross on dry land. So do what you can do. If you can't do anything but be a blessing to one family, do it. One person, do it. Little becomes much when you put it in the hands of the Lord. All right? All right. Cool. So we all right? We going to stop turning on each other? Let's not get involved in the friendly fire. You know? I had to jump in a few conversations on Facebook because I was just like, wait a minute, we're doing too much. <laughs> we're doing way, way too much. And it's still raining. Still raining, by the way. Let me read this comment. So many Christians with heart failure. Whew, now that'll preach. And hide behind the mask. I have preached that. Um, that they use to tear one another down. It's all about love. That's absolutely right. So I've been just saying, look. Be extra kind. Smile, smile a little bit more. You know, uh, do what you can. Be a little bit more patient, a little bit more gracious. Everybody's under pressure. Everybody's concerned right now. There's loved ones in Texas. There's people going through. Our news is being flooded with news about people being drowned and people trying to get out. People, emotions are at an all-time high. Let's just be the body of Christ. We already know how to do it. We've read the Bible over and over. We know what Jesus would do. Let's go and just get it done. Get it done. You be the church. Let me read what Brittany's saying. It's crazy. People are mad at Job, but the Cajun Navy came to help and were greeted with being robbed and shot at. So it's six in one hand and half a dozen in the other. Wow. Let me read what Strother said. Hey, Strother! Being that many from New Orleans and Houston, I have been faced with a storm 12 years ago or now. Don't allow sadness or depression to be overwhelmed, but get busy. You know, that's great. That's great advice. Um, many of you, you know, when we sit and see these things, we're like, oh my goodness, we feel so helpless, wondering what we can do. We're watching the news. We're reading the timelines. You know, watching and, and really being overwhelmed I'm telling you even 12 years it happened 12 years I feel some kind of way after you've gone through something like that Katrina and then the flood last year in Baton Rouge I promise you don't look at those news stories the same way 
They are no longer faceless, nameless people. It becomes personal. Also, I want you to think about the fact that even though there were people who went through Katrina 12 years ago, where do you think they moved to when they left New Orleans? Many of them moved to Houston. So they're going through it again. And it's not fun. That's an understatement. So, you know, it's easy to be overwhelmed. But for me, I, I found peace with helping. Even though I went to Katrina, we went through the shelter. We went to the shelter and we volunteered because we got out alive. I remember not even knowing the state of my own home um, during Katrina, but going to a shelter to volunteer because I just couldn't sit at home and do nothing. Just couldn't do it. It's not in me. It's just not in me to do. I had to get out, do something, volunteer somewhere, and I still didn't know what the condition of, of you know, was going to be like in my own house. So I want the nation to remember 12 years ago today. And then fa flash forward, fast forward to today. We're in the same situation. Now, I gotta, I wouldn't be me if I didn't do this. 12 years. 12. Just let that sink in. 12 years. To the date. 12. I know we don't want to go deep. People don't want us to be prophetic. People don't want us to say... Perhaps God is sending a message. People don't want us to. People don't want us to. No, just give us bottles of water. No, just let us come into your churches. No, just just help us out. No, just give us money. Don't say nothing. Oh, well, here we go. Twelve years ago. We didn't hear the message. We didn't hear it. We kept doing what we kept doing. We couldn't wait to get back and do things that did not honor God. Some of the first things that were reopened were clubs and bars and worshiping things that are not God. Twelve years ago. Um, we didn't want, we, we want to hear that perhaps God may have been speaking. Throughout the word of God, God has always spoken. He's spoken through storms. He spoke through the storm, Yorokladon, in the word of God. It's there. He spoke through the winds. He spoke through the waves. He always uses uh, natural occurrences to speak. Always. Don't get so caught up in the politics and in the chaos that the state of our country appears to be in. And miss what he's saying. Yeah, just just don't miss it. Okay? Don't miss don't miss what he's saying. Don't miss an opportunity to be the church. Don't miss an opportunity to give. Don't miss an opportunity to love. For a month now I've been uh impressing upon my ministry, ministries that I oversee, to evangelize, to be the church. Now that message is ringing loud and clearly. Why we need to do that. Yeah. People need to see us being the church, okay? Hear, hear the Lord now. Don't get so caught up in recovering your stuff till you don't recover your soul. I'm going to say it. Don't be so caught up in claiming items that you lost that you neglect the fact that souls are lost. People are lost. Um, and they've lost more than possessions. They've lost more than homes and houses and clothes. The fact is, people are losing their souls every day. And the church doors, who? <laughs> Some of those doors remain closed, too. Hmm. Yeah. Just chill on that for a minute. Just for a minute. So, you know, first natural, then the spirit. First natural, then the spirit. First natural, then spirit. So as a prophet of God, as an apostle, as a preacher, pick whichever one you're comfortable with. As a voice, mouthpiece. Can't help but say God is trying to tell us something. Huh? 
Are you listening? What What is he saying to you? Let, let me hear you in the comment section now. What word of hope can you give somebody? What word of comfort can you give someone? And what, what word of truth can you give someone? The truth is, he's always used occurrences to capture our attention. What message are you hearing? Hmm? Yeah, that's all. Love you guys. Pray that you are well and that you're safe. Keep Louisiana lifted. Um, they say it's coming our way. It's been raining for a couple of days now. And we are bracing ourselves to see what this storm is going to do. But one thing I am grateful of uh, is that I know who Jesus is. And I know that my soul is anchored in the Lord. If I've done anything to anybody, I'm sorry. T to God and to his people. Um, love and kindness draws people. So make sure you're loving someone today. That you can draw people to Christ. I rejoice. I rejoice that people are asking where is the church. Because here's our prime time to show the world where we are. We're right here where we've always been. With arms stretched wide saying come to Jesus while you still have time. Where is the church? We're right here. Where's the prayer? Never stopped. Where's the love? Never ceased. Here we are. Right here. Being the body of Christ. Like Jesus commanded us to do. And learning every day. How to be, uh, be his followers. Be his disciples. And be his examples. Alright. Alright. God bless you guys. I'm going to go. going to uh, check on my family. Check on my folks. Y'all be well. Be safe. Bye.